Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to put a great flat earth question to rest. Is moonlight cold? Well, obviously the answer is no, but let's go ahead and assume for the moment that moonlight is indeed cold. Well, the claim is that when moonlight is shining upon an object, it gets colder, and if you put some shade up, it's actually warmer under the shade, therefore, the moonlight itself is causing the object to be cold. Now, while this is a violation of the laws of thermodynamics and blatantly misunderstands what's going on, let's assume for a moment that that's our null hypothesis and that if the moonlight is shining on an object, it will be colder than if it's not shining on an object. Well, as it turns out, we can test that in a very interesting way that I've not seen done before. Specifically, let's let the moon shine through a clear glass window onto the ground underneath. If it is indeed the moonlight causing the ground to be cooler, the ground underneath the window will be the same temperature as the ground outside of the window. Let's go ahead and have a look at my test apparatus. Okay, so here's the uh, scientific apparatus that we're going to use. As you can see, there is a concrete block here and another one over on that side. And on top, we have a double pane window. And if you look underneath it, you'll see no blocking. It's all open to the air. Now, what real science says is that when the sun shines on the earth, some of that radiant heat from the sun is absorbed by the atmosphere. Some is reflected by the atmosphere or reflected off the tops of clouds. And some actually makes it down to the earth. Now, part of that is reflected back into space immediately. And part of that solar energy is absorbed by the ground and the ground heats up. Now, at night, the opposite effect occurs. The earth is the warm body and it radiates that heat off of its surface back up into space. Now, if there are clouds, that long wave radiation is reflected back down to Earth. And for those of you that live in the colder regions of the world, you know that on a cold winter night, if the night is clear, it is colder than if it's a cloudy night or if it's snowing because snow comes from clouds. That's because on a clear night, that heat is radiated off into space and lost. On a cloudy night, it goes up to the clouds and then bounces back down to the ground. As a result, it's warmer under clouds than it is under a clear sky. Now, to look at this effect, we can set up an alternative hypothesis, and that is that the Earth warms up during the day, and then at night, that heat is radiated off the surface of the Earth back up into space. So if you put anything over it, be it clouds, be it a tree, be it a picnic table, or be it a pane of glass, that heat will be reflected back down to the ground, and as a result, it will be warmer underneath the glass than it would be in the open lawn next to the glass. So we can test both of these hypotheses against each other by simply measuring the ground around the glass and the ground under the glass. The fact that the moonlight shines right through the glass will equally cool everything. If heat is radiating up from the earth, it will be warmer under the glass. Okay, the sun has clearly set, and we're gonna go ahead and take some temperatures. Now the moon, as you can clearly see, is not up yet. So let's go check out these temperatures. 70 degrees for the brick, 64 degrees for the frame, 68 degrees for the ground and underneath 70 degrees 70 degrees 70 degrees come around here and see if we've got any additional ones 66 here 70 there Sixty-eight, seventy-two. So already we're in a little bit of trouble for this null hypothesis. Uh, the ground is obviously cooler outside of the window than it is underneath the window. Furthermore, there's no moon in sight. The sun is down below the horizon, we're in twilight, and that was a baseline reading. 
let's go ahead and check it out when it's actually dark, but before the moon came up. All right, it's a good hour after sunset. We are now fully dark. And as you can see, the dredges are pretty active tonight. There's another one literally right behind the observatory. So probably not too much in the line of telescopes tonight. But let's go ahead and get some temperature readings. So our first reading on the ground next to the uh, glass is 64 degrees. 64 degrees. 64 degrees. and 64 degrees. Underneath the glass, sixty-six degrees. Sixty-eight degrees. Sixty-six degrees. and 66 degrees, 66 degrees. So that's all four sides. Well, now the moon is up. Let's retest. 57 degrees. 57 degrees. 59 degrees. 59 degrees. So now we go underneath. 63 degrees. 63 degrees. 61 degrees versus 59 59 57 and 57 I continued this for several hours consistently finding that the ground underneath the window the clear window that allowed moonlight to pass through it was about four degrees Fahrenheit higher than the ground surrounding the window. I also did a couple of controls. Uh, for example, I measured the ground beside the window to make sure that it was of uniform temperature, and then I flipped the window over to cover that new patch of ground and let it sit for about 20 minutes. Once again, four degrees difference underneath the window compared to outside the window. During this entire latter half of the experiment, the moon was high in the sky and was 96%, nearly a full moon. Now, while this is really quite conclusive that the heat is radiating up from the ground and the moon itself has absolutely nothing to do with any of this, we're going to test one more thing in about two weeks. Uh, tonight, we have a 96% moon. In two weeks, we will have a new moon. So make sure you give me a follow and see what the results of that test will be. However, so far it looks like I have ruled out the null hypothesis that moonlight itself is cold. We'll talk about this a little bit more in two weeks and see if we can just put it to bed once and for all. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Make sure you give me a follow and a like, and I'll see you again in two weeks. Take care.